Well, good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder and this is BRN AM for Monday, January 11th, 2021. And today's top stories, an increase in corporate focus in sustainability and as consumer demand for responsibility rises, a temptation to greenwash. Joining me now to discuss this and more is Bob Colley. He's founder and principal with Colley ESG. Bob, Happy New Year. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy to, Happy New Year to you. It's good, good to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, 2021, off to, off to a, a, a bang. Uh, here we are talking in the first or second week of January. And, um, you know, we want to talk sustainability. And there has really been a shift of thinking uh, in the last few years on corporate responsibility and how that relates to sustainability. I know you've done a lot of thinking about this. What can you tell us? That's right. And, um, and, and I, I think of it as all coming down to this recognition that we're all connected to one another. Everything that we do has an impact on other people. And so economic activity is, is great. Markets are wonderful. We can choose to interact with one another. You can sell me something. And, and as long as you're not lying to me about what it is that you're selling, Markets do a really, really good job of, of making that activity in both of our interests. We, we enter into the, 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 the activity freely. We choose to buy and sell. That's why economists like markets so much. And this is why um, corporations are now so powerful and um, so successful within the, the capitalist system within the US because markets are good, right? You know, we, we can do what we want to do. And it, it allows the world to work smoothly nobody's kind of forcing us to do things that we don't want to do so that all works really well up to a point where that stops being perfect is where if we're doing something we have a negative effect on somebody else so we we decide oh you know let's open an airport we've got people that want to fly we've got airplanes we're going to open an airport well guess what the people just down the road from the airport they're not so happy that this has happened. We're having this negative effect on, on third people. Everything we do, it turns out, has some sort of impact on the community. Basically, every company is embedded in a community. The people that work for us, uh, they're drawn from a community. Our, our customers, they're part of a community. And so I think that, that what's happened in the last few years is this recognition that, yes, markets are great. You don't want to regulate people away from doing what they're choosing of their own free will to do. But we have to recognize that they're not happening independently of society. They're not happening in some bubble over to the side with no connection to anybody else. And so just that sense that you need to put companies into the context that they're operating is what's driving this increased view on, on corporate responsibility. So typically people might say, well, a company is not just about the shareholders. You also have a responsibility, say, to the suppliers. You have responsibility to the, um, the people that work for you to your workforce you have responsibility to the community around you and so just taking into account the company doesn't exist exclusively to make profits for the shareholders it also exists as part of society that's kind of driving this change of mentality and, and some people welcome this change of mentality other people get a little bit kind of leery about it and scared of where it may lead but that that's the driving force yeah and, and bob i mean is it a generational, and we've talked about this before. I mean, is it the younger generation driving driving this? Is it, you know, there are so-called activist investors driving this? Um, is there an acceptance now, and and of we'll, we'll accept maybe a little bit of low returns or a haircut in returns if that if that comes about for this sustainability initiative, this this uh, drive of. Uh, drive for a corporate uh, for corporate principles. I I I think there is a generational element to it. That that's part of the story. Um, but to pick up on something else that you, you just said there, um, it's not just about taking a, a, a profit haircut in order to um, in order to achieve these wider goals. And in fact, one of the things that people increasingly are recognizing, and there's research um, to back this up, is that actually the companies who see themselves as having a wider purpose 
actually tend to be more successful than the ones that are just focused on on profits so again you, you there's lots of studies showing all sorts of things out there but let me just just quote one of them this this said that it looked at the statement of companies' objectives and they said here's the things that we're trying to achieve and it, and the more that a company emphasized profitability among its objectives the less profitable that company tended to be and it's because it, profits it turns out are probably one of those things that are best pursued a little bit indirectly if i set out to make a fantastic whatever a web hosting system a fantastic automobile if i set out to do to make fantastic coffee whatever it is i'm more likely to do a really good job and to build a really great business than if i just say okay i'm going to try and make as much money as i can my purpose is just to make money and so part of the the, the driving force behind corporate responsibility is not just that oh this is to do something at the expense of profit it turns out this is a way to make business long term more profitable more more effective um, so who knew it turns out that profits are maybe best pursued indirectly not directly bob what it, you know we've talked in the past when you were on about grading or disclo- you know disclosure transparency and being able to figure out whether or not an organization, how they grade in terms of meeting their objectives or fulfilling uh, what act, you know, activist investors or other investors are, are wanting or what their boards have decreed that they're going to go after. Has there been any progress with that? And when it comes to the mom and pop investor, people like myself, just a retail investor, are they better off investing in an exchange traded fund, perhaps, rather than going down the road and selecting one fund or another get your thoughts on that well there, there's you you there's a lot of different answers to that and a, a good solution to that you know you need a good financial advisor that fits into your exact circumstances so yeah it, it, it the simple answer i can't give you but a couple of the principles i think that, that underpin that um certainly as far as esg is concerned is it's it's getting easier there's a wider choice starting to become available around ways that you may be able to pursue sustainable objectives either just to incorporate sustainability alongside traditional financial goals so you know, there are funds out there that would say you know we want to maximize returns and to the extent that we can pursue other goals without sacrificing returns um we're going to try and do that so that's kind of a relatively easy way in to ESG is to find one of those funds there are also impact funds out there and and an impact fund is one where i'm as an investor saying yeah if this costs me returns that's fine because i really believe in what we're doing so that's going a little bit further um but one of the nice things that is happening as there's more interest in this is that creates more supply as well so most um most investment firms either have products which have some elements of ESG to them now or they're likely to be launching those over the next few years because it's it's such a growth area and there is demand for it so the good news for consumers is that choice is increasing again it's it's a very complex world out there and I, I think you you talk to a lot of people who are better placed than I am to to give the individual financial advice um, that, that that people really need well, Bob, I want to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the temptation to greenwash. Kind of dovetails nicely into what we were discussing before. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? 
especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Hi folks, Joe Namath here, and if you're on Medicare, this is important. You're now entitled to eliminate co-pays and get dental care, dentures, eyeglasses, prescription coverage, in-home aids, unlimited transportation, and home-delivered meals all at no additional cost. Plus, your zip code may have coverage with the give back benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every month. Look, with the uncertainty of the virus and vaccines, you need to get everything you're entitled to. Here's the bottom line. Call to get significant benefits at no additional cost and see if your zip code has coverage with the give back benefit. Millions of people have trusted the Medicare Coverage Helpline. You can too. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-924-3920. That's 1-800-924-3920. Welcome back. We're talking to Bob Colley of Colley ESG. Bob, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Oh, no problem. So, Bob, I want to talk about something that maybe it's a little controversial, but but oftentimes, you know, there, there could be a temptation, not oftentimes, there could be a temptation to greenwash. And, and what I mean by that is that, you know, an organization might have the right uh, approach, the principles behind them, but they just may fall down in terms of the application. And I want to get your sense for this because, you know, you're out there talking to a lot of managers, a lot of investors and people who are very interested in this space. What is that? What does that temptation look like? And is it real and relevant? I, it, it's it's unfortunately it, it's definitely real and and and, and I, I think with greenwashing it comes in two forms. There's one element which is relatively benign, which is just people are trying to do their best and they're trying to create the best story they can. And sometimes, well, that story runs a little bit ahead of ahead of reality and so on, and, and they don't necessarily match up. And that is, you know, that's not ideal but it, it's not cynical it, it, it's not flat out lying but unfortunately there are also a number of cases not so many but this this happens where people will just tell this great story with no intention and no real commitment no authenticity behind um the what what they're doing relatively rare that, that firms would do that because that's no way to run a business long term um, but it does happen, and, and you know we, we have those scandals. You have the, you know, whether it's Wirecard or Enron or you know th that list of names. I think we're all familiar with with a lot of them. It's quite a long list. That does unfortunately happen. Um, but I think that's the exception um, rather than the rule. But we need to be careful of it. Is it is part of that view that you may be not you, but an organization may be greenwashing? Is part of that just? the perception that you need to be 100%, you know, are we, do, we, do we foster unrealistic expectations because we're, we're all humans, no matter if we're using some algorithm or artificial intelligence to help us screen, right? And that was programmed by a human being, it's not a sentient being. Um, is, is, that a fair, uh, is that a fair perception that you gotta be excellent, you gotta be a, perfect 100% of the time? And does that lead to a premature call of greenwashing on somebody, well, it, it does, and, and it, so if, if if society is saying, you know, if, I, if I'm a corporation doing whatever, you know, so I'm I'm, I'm a fossil fuel company and I'm, I'm producing fossil fuels, that's what I'm do, doing, and then society comes to me and says, I want you to stop, you know, emitting carbon. Well, I can't do that tomorrow. Um, I could, as a fossil fuel company, say. I see the writing on the wall, 
I want to get to a state where you know, what I'm about is generating energy, meeting the energy needs of the world, which are not going away, no matter how much we, we try to transition away from fossil fuels. So I'm going to transition, pivot into renewables and all, all, that, all that stuff. Now, I can do that in a way which is, you know, that doesn't happen overnight for, for those companies to do that. And so some people may come in and say, well, you're not going as fast as we want you to go. And they accuse me of greenwashing. Other people may, may say, um, your, your marketing material, look at this, it's inconsistent with, with what you're doing there. And I think some of, some of the expectations, as you say, are unrealistic. And, and that just complicates the picture. On the other hand, you know, if it turns out that when you scratch below the surface, I'm actually spending millions of dollars on lobbying against environmental protection, well, now you can come to me and you've got a much more legitimate case that's saying, hold on, you're, you're just pulling the wool over our eyes here because at the same time as you're marketing yourself as being part of this transition to a new economy, um, actually you're lobbying for things to stay exactly as they are. And it's only if you're able to dig below my activities and really see what I'm really doing that you can start to make that judgment. Is this greenwashing? Is this um, legitimate transition that, that the company's going for? And it can be very hard to, to tell the difference between the two. Bob, when it comes to implementing some of these changes and whether it's diversity, whether it's elimination of fossil fuels, whether it's any one of these pertinent issues for a board, is there a reasonable timetable? Like to say, and I think this is part of that greenwashing conversation, and correct me if I'm wrong, of course, but you're thinking about doing this at a board, as a board, you take a vote, you instruct the, the management of an organization to effectuate a change. Is there a process that has to be put in place to actually to come up with a reasonable timetable? Because if not, we get to that same problem that you and I were just chatting about, which is if we don't set reasonable expectations, we look like we're not doing anything as a board. And you highlighted some of the things that we may be lobbying, we may be doing all these other things. They may, that may not be transparent to a group of investors, unfortunately, for whatever reason. But do you as a board need to think about, uh, and a management thinking about what it's gonna take to implement this and set reasonable goals and timeframes? It is, and, and what what obviously you can't do it is do everything at once. If if, yeah. if there's a hundred different things being thrown at you saying we need diversity, we need less greenhouse gas emissions, we, a lot of other things, all of which are legitimate objectives, or most most of which are legitimate objectives. Um, it, 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 there's a prioritization that's needed, and and I think part of what you see there is that there is a um, uh, a kind of a build up a snowball effect with with a lot of these causes that they'll start with a few leaders and then they gather momentum and then you, you see them really take hold and so the timelines um, can become quite compressed so for example you know diversity has been you know a conversation which a few people were having for a while and then it really gathered momentum and there was a lot of view that well you, you know the, the fact that so many boards had no female representation at all or no minority representation at all this became an issue and and it, it was interesting that um in 2020 for the first time every single s p 500 company had at least one female director so from being well short of, of that goal not that long ago somehow momentum built up that it turned out that the timeline to, to get to that goal at least was shorter than maybe we would have expected um, not that long ago. Um, so sometimes momentum will really accelerate it, but that takes uh, uh, this snowball effect of a lot of people moving on whatever the causes are. And, and that's where maybe the, the consumers do have a say is because whatever areas people talk about, whatever areas you know, you're talking about, whatever the conversation um, that rises up is, that tends to be the one that gets the action. The, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and so um, we can we can get there, but we can't get there on everything all at once. Yeah, well, it's always important to set reasonable expectations, yeah. along with very important, clear, definable principles. Bob, we're going to leave it there. Always a pleasure chatting with you. I want to wish you and your family a happy new year, and we look forward to you having you having you back again on the program very soon. Thanks, Jeffrey. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest or someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, 
for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, all in the same place. Check out today's edition of The Morning Pulse. So until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.